As a child, I never really played a lot of shoot 'em up games, or shmups as we call them. I mean, sure, I played some, but they never held my attention long enough to keep me coming back. Especially because many of them are hard as hell. It wasn't until a few years ago that I really got into the genre, and now I'm always on the lookout for a great shoot 'em up. A little while ago, Tyrion 2000 was released on GOG as a free game, and naturally I added it to my collection. I didn't really get the chance to play it until now, but I'm sure as hell glad that I did because it's a perfect example of a great shmup with high replay value that doesn't just rely on memorization. Alright, so here's some backstory. Developed by World Tree Games, the original Tyrion was a DOS game released in 1995 as shareware containing only the first episode. Eventually, Tyrion version 1.1 was released with three episodes, a ship editor, and was basically a full game. Tyrion 2.0 added an additional fourth episode, a two-player mode, new ships and weapons, and even a new game mode called Super Tyrion. It also added a Christmas mode which activates if you play the game in December. Finally, Tyrion 3.0 or Tyrion 2000 was released in 1999 and contained an additional fifth episode and other new goodies like new ships and bug fixes. So there is actually a story going on here with, you know, characters and everything. Yeah, it's pretty unusual for a shmup, and I'm guessing this is because it wasn't developed as an arcade game, which would obviously focus on, you know, eating your money. You play as a terraforming pilot, Trent Hawkins, in the year 20,031. His friend is attacked and killed by an evil corporation called Microsol, and apparently they control the terraformation on the planet Tyrion. Of course, Microsol has evil plans, and it becomes Trent's job to stop them, blow them up, fuck them up, you get the idea. There's five episodes total, and each episode consists of about a dozen or so levels, including secret levels, and there's even alternate paths. In between episodes and certain levels, you'll be greeted with some text that explains what's happening, very similar to Doom. This is a shmup after all, so the story isn't really what kept me playing, but it's there if you want it. There's even data cubes you can find throughout the levels that flesh out the story and characters further. In between levels is a menu where you can upgrade your ship, read data cubes, save or load your game, and all that kind of jazz. Tyrion 2000 is fucking packed with content. So there's different game modes you can play through, there's full game mode, which is basically the story mode, the meat of the game, and there's even an arcade mode and a timed battle mode. Arcade mode just has you going from level to level, and in timed battle mode, you're given a set time to beat each level. You have your typical easy, normal, and hard difficulty modes, and two hidden difficulties, impossible and suicide. You can enter a code at the title screen that unlocks the hidden Lord of the Game difficulty, but I have yet to punish myself on anything higher than normal and hard. Higher difficulties just means enemies will have more health, faster bullets, and you'll need to dodge enemy fire like a fucking maniac. During the game, you can actually adjust the speed of the gameplay, which ranges from slug to turbo, Slug feels as if you're playing in slow motion, and I don't see why anybody would want to play at that speed, so of course I would recommend playing on normal or turbo. At first glance, this plays like every other vertical shmup you've probably ever seen. You know the drill, you fly around the screen trying to blow up all the enemies while avoiding enemy fire. But what makes Tyrion unique is its awesome shop and upgrade system. You start out with 10 grand and a very basic ship. The money is used to upgrade your ship, including new ship types, shields, generators, weapons, and sidekicks. You have a front gun, a rear gun, and the two sidekicks act as additional attack drones of sorts that accompany your ship. The front and rear guns can be upgraded a total of 11 times, and weapons do consume energy. This is where the generator comes in. The generator replenishes shields and weapons, and better generators cost more, but replenish your weapons and shields faster. So there is this sort of balance between weapon power, generators, and shields, but by the end of the game you should be able to afford the best shit available, making your ship a fucking beast. In the beginning, one boss was kicking my ass repeatedly, so after switching to a less powerful front gun, I found my shields would recharge faster, enabling me to endure the fight for longer and eventually take him down. Fuck this guy.
It's also possible that I just suck at dodging because, well, I'm just terrible at shmups. There's all sorts of guns to buy. You've got cannons, bombs, missiles, fireballs, lightning guns, wave shots, and more that I haven't even tried or found yet. Many of the sidekicks act as automatic weapons like the Vulcan and dual shot options, and then there's others that fire bombs, and there's even a flamethrower sidekick. One of my favorites is the Battleship Class Firebomb. This thing can be launched in front of your ship and fire at enemies, and then reattach back to the front of your ship, similar to the R-Type games. Buying new ship types is essentially just buying a new ship, and the only difference between them is their appearance and armor. By the end of the game, I could afford all of the best shit, and my ship was upgraded to a point where I felt as if I could defeat anything with ease. Level completed. In some levels, my shots were so powerful that I was destroying some bosses before they were even fully on the screen. But this isn't to say the game is a cakewalk. I played on normal and still died quite a few times, but I also suck when it comes to this genre. It's obvious Tyrion doesn't take itself seriously. I mean, at one point I acquired a hot dog weapon. Yeah, I was firing hot dogs. You can even pilot a carrot ship. And this silliness applies to the enemies, too. Tyrion 2000 has a ridiculously wide array of enemies. Yeah, you got your typical spaceships and jets, as well as ground turrets and cannons coming out of the walls, towers, buildings, and structures, all firing at you. But then you'll be up against lips and eyeballs, fish-looking enemies and seahorses, spinning blades, balls or orbs, or whatever the fuck those things are. Even dragons. At least I think they're dragons pretty fucking cool. I mean, the enemies will shoot at you or try and fly into you, and figuring out their patterns isn't difficult. Some of the balls mentioned earlier are magnetic and suck you in, and touching them, of course, will drain your shield, eventually leading to your death. These things are the fucking devil, I swear to god. Now, when your armor is low, some ships will fly in, and when they're shot, they'll drop armor, but for some reason, I always miss collecting them. I think I was too busy flying around like a fucking madman, avoiding everything, that I didn't realize what it was at first, and could never get to it in time. There is no penalty for death, other than starting the level over again, and killing enemies rewards you with money, and sometimes they'll even drop weapons and upgrades. Once you have money, you don't really lose it. Buying another upgrade just means you're selling your current upgrade at the same price you bought it. Now this is really cool because it allows you to try new upgrades and weapon combinations without much of a risk. Killing specific enemies will drop data cubes that you can collect, and these just give you some background on the story and what's going on, characters, etc. You can even collect these orb-like things that unlock secret levels, and these levels will give you access to unique weapons and upgrades. Then you have the bonus levels, or mini-games, or whatever the fuck they are. I found most of these just to be tedious. You're given a ship and specific weapons that are required to complete the level by just killing all the enemies, but you'll need to dodge bouncing enemies and energy fields, collect ale, and one bonus level even resembles Galaxian or Galaga, with ships flying down at you and breaking away, requiring you to destroy each fleet. It sucks because you're given a ship that's less equipped than your current one, making killing the enemies and dodging attacks that much harder, and to top it all off, you're only given two lives. Luckily, you do have the option to skip these, at least on the normal difficulty. By entering a code, you can even unlock a hidden minigame or bonus level called Destruct, which I didn't try, and apparently it's a clone of the game Scorched Earth. Most levels do have an end boss, and depending on how well equipped your ship is can determine how hard the boss may be. It also helps if you have quick reaction times for dodging, unlike me. Bosses have only a few attack patterns, but sometimes avoiding their attacks can be tricky, resulting in trial and error, but none of them felt really cheap. Graphically, the game looks great. Objects and backgrounds have a decent amount of detail and everything is colorful and vibrant, and there's even some great parallax scrolling going on. Variety really makes this game shine, and this definitely applies to the environments. You'll be flying through space, asteroid fields, and various planets. Areas will be on fire or covered in ice. You'll fly over grasslands, jungles, and deserts. You'll have to avoid swinging maces and fleets of giant ships. You'll frequently be traveling back to the same areas, but there's always something different going on. Tyrion never gets stale, and just when you think you've seen it all, it throws something new at you. Even the music is pretty great. I mean, listen to this. Is the game perfect? No. But what game is? 
Now I used X pattern to map my Xbox One controller, and whenever I release any of the directional buttons, the ship will keep moving in that direction for a brief moment. I even noticed this with the keyboard controls. It can become annoying when trying to dodge and avoid obstacles. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, as it never caused any cheap deaths, but I get the feeling I don't have complete control over the ship's movement, or at least stopping. Another issue I ran into is that when I had my ship equipped with weapons that fire attacks that filled the screen, I found it hard to see some enemy bullets coming at me, especially during boss fights. By the time I realized I was getting shot at, it was too late. It's also worth mentioning that episode 5 feels like a joke. It seemed short compared to the previous episodes, and none of the levels felt really challenging. Sure, my ship was maxed out by this point, but even with a powerful ship, I still had to overcome challenges in previous episodes. I just felt like episode 5 was too easy and I breezed right through it. Tyrion 2000 is great for several reasons, and I can go on and on about how awesome it is, but the most important thing is that it's fun. The replay value here is extremely high, but not because you'll die over and over again until you memorize everything like most other shmups, but because the game is loaded with content and diversity. It's always throwing something new at you and remains interesting throughout all five episodes. There's hundreds of ways to customize your ship, tons of secrets to find, multiple difficulty modes, and even a two-player arcade mode. I would say this is a great shmup for anyone new to the genre because if I can beat it, anyone can. That's not to say this game isn't up there with the best of them because it is. So if you want that extreme shmup challenge that matches your sadistic lust for death, you can always ramp up the difficulty or use codes to unlock the hidden difficulty modes or you can just play Gaiaris on the Sega Genesis. Yeah, I can't even get past the second level in that game. Tyrion 2000 is all about fun and is one of the greatest shmups I've ever played.